So there's a lot of people nowadays, especially, who have their medical marijuana card and are spending a ton of money on cannabis, whether it's from a dispensary or from your caregiver. It just gets too expensive. So more and more of us are growing our own cannabis. Now to get your cannabis grow room started, it can cost a lot of money and it can take a lot of time and effort. But luckily here at Cannabis Lifestyle TV, we decided to put together a nice and simple guide to walk you through that process to get you the main essentials that you're gonna need without wasting a lot of time and money on getting those. So quick disclaimer, a lot of these options here I'm using currently and some of us here at Cannabis Lifestyle are as well. You may want to change it up depending on your circumstances, but this definitely works and it's definitely going to help you out to get going. So starting out, your must-haves, you're going to need to get lighting. No matter how you're growing, no matter where you're growing, you're going to need lighting. So for your lighting, you're going to definitely need to get a T5 would be my suggestion for vegging. Uh, there's four and eight bulb options. They have smaller ones too that you can use for your cloning in your vegging. Then for flowering, personally, I'm using a 600 watt high pressure sodium and then I'm also using some 1000 watt high pressure sodiums. I'm noticing the best results, especially for affordability and the heat with the 600 watt high pressure sodium. Um, the difference that you're going to be getting with the 1000 water is for one, it goes you know, wider. You're getting a four and a half to five by five compared to the three and a half to four by four with the 600 watt. And also the difference with the 600 water in a positive way, you're having a lot less heat. So you're able to bring that light closer to your plants, you know, basically getting more yield per square foot, essentially compared to burning your plants with bringing that light too low. And again, that's just from my experience. Others may have an argument, some sort of other opinion, and love to hear about it in the comment section to kind of help educate other people who are watching this too. You're gonna also need to get a hood and a ballast for that. I suggest getting the double XL hood, a wider hood that will go wider. It's not gonna penetrate as deep, but you're gonna wanna remove a lot of that bottom stuff from your plant anyways. You don't want those little bottom nothing immature buds that are being covered by the top of that canopy. Uh, and then also for your ballast, the digital ballast is the best, in my opinion, and I feel like everyone's opinion. It's less heat, less on your electricity, and just more efficient overall. From there, you're gonna need to get your fans. Now, an inline fan is crucial when you're using a high pressure sodium light with an air-cooled hood. And also, if you're gonna be using any sort of filtration system, you're definitely gonna want an inline fan. Uh, they have six inch and eight inch, depending on the size of your hood, buy them accordingly. And then also some standard wall fans. I prefer wall fans just because they're not taking up your floor space, the real estate in your room, and they're able to cover a lot more ground. Otherwise, you can get your simple, you know, isolate and regular fans that sit and cool the room. Then it's optional, but I definitely suggest getting it, is getting a filter. They have carbon filters that'll help block that uh, odor, that stinky, danky odor. And if you live in a residential area, for one, people don't want to smell that. And for two, well, some people may want to smell it, but those people may come into your house and take your stuff. So you definitely want to be low key on that because right now it's just a little too sketchy to be out there in the open like that. Then you're going to need to get your room essentials. So that would be either poly, the white black plastic that you put up on the walls or a grow tent. Depending on your situation or your room, uh, pick them accordingly. You'd also want to get a measuring device like a shot glass or measuring cup. So that way with your nutrients or anything else, your preventative measures, you can actually measure these things out accordingly instead of just eyeballing it and messing things up. You'll need a temperature and humidity meter, so that way you can monitor the room humidity and temperature accordingly because your plants will stress out if it's too low or too high. You gotta make sure you're keeping an eye on that. And then you're gonna need pots. Now for seedlings and clones, cups will work good. You can get those solo Dixie cups that works or you can get little small mini joints that you see at Home Depot or your local grocery store. Then also one gallon pots for your babies and then three to five gallon pots for teens. Some people will flower out in these me personally, I usually go to 10 gallon pots. I have no other people who go all the way up to 100 gallon smart pots. I mean, if you wanna go hard, go hard. I suggest think about your real estate, think about the space you have and how many plants that you're gonna be able to grow and choose them accordingly. You're gonna also need your medium. So I personally use a cocoa mix. Others use soil, others use, you know, straight up hydro, deep water culture, um, flood tables, it all, it depends. I definitely would suggest you getting something that's easy to manage and to start out with, that being like soil or cocoa. Most people just don't really have the time necessarily to start or the budget to put into getting all the automation with the hydro system or the time to maintain the whole thing. Uh, and then you're gonna need at least two sprayers. You know, one for just water to mist your plants and your clones and then another for preventative measures, whether that be your miticide, pesticide, whatever, or something for powder mildew, whatever you're dealing with. Then you're gonna need some buckets to mix your nutrients. So I suggest five gallon buckets. You could just scoop them up from Home Depot, those ugly orange ones, they work great. And then depending on your water situation, 
lot of people have crap in their water. You're gonna have chlorine, you're gonna have a lot of things that can harm your plant and, and really block the nutrients from being absorbed properly. So you wanna get a reverse osmosis system uh, or an RO system. I personally right now have the small boy, pretty cheap, I believe it was under 100 bucks, got it at the local grocery store. Works great for my setup. Uh, and then a pH meter. Now, regardless if you're using nutrients that are, you know, pH perfect, whatever, you're gonna want a pH meter because there's been numerous times where I've had plants that were stressed out and had some issues and I didn't know what was going on, so I wanted to test that runoff water. And how are you gonna test that if you don't got a pH meter? Get a pH meter. You're also gonna wanna get a cloner or some sort of dome for your babies because it's just mandatory. If you wanna keep a perpetual growth system and not have to always go buy new clones and more seeds, get a cloner ASAP. And with that cloner, definitely get some clone gel. I've seen people do without, but it takes way longer and I'd rather just get my thing, my clones out and ready to go. Get it done quickly, why mess around, you know? And, and really you wanna just get things as efficient as possible. So by adding a little extra supplement, it definitely will help speed things up without the hassle of adding this or that to try to make it happen organically. And then of course, you're gonna need to get your nutrients. Now again, a lot of it comes into preference. I myself am using a mixture of uh, Houston Garden, I'm using just their A and B, and I'm using Humboldt Secrets Golden Tree with that, and it's knocking it out of the park. Here and there, I'll add in the Mother of All Blooms, which is another additive that you can use that actually will help bring it into flower and increase the flowering, or the, the stacking, so to speak. And there's uh, multiple things that you can use to, that are add-ons, but a lot of the nutrient companies now, they put everything in one, so you can get a whole line and kind of test things out. Um, one that I would suggest definitely off the bat would be Humboldt Secret. Their line is really nice, um, pretty simple. You only need to use the main core parts, but the extra add-ons are really good too. I'll have a link in the description for that. So then you're gonna also need some sort of preventative measure. Now think about pests, anything that may happen outside, it can happen inside, a little different though. There's things like mites, thripes, root aphids, a variety of irritating little shits that can really cause some problems in your grow. And I've dealt with them from day one on whether you're taking a clone from somebody or you have somebody come in, it's like, it's a constant battle, no matter what. So you're not just gonna be good to go without some sort of preventative measure. So definitely make sure you get something. And then as you get into flower, even later into veg, you're gonna maybe potentially struggle with stability. No matter how big your pot is, if your buds get too big, they're gonna hang over and be an issue. And if you're not using a scrog net, which we'll be explaining that in a future video, uh, you're gonna need some sort of trellising or else sticks, bamboo sticks preferably, to help hold those up and to keep them stable during you know rougher times or if you have heavy wind. You're gonna also need some sort of shears, uh, something to basically trim your plant a little bit to work on it, especially taking clones, you can't just rip them off of there. You're gonna get shears at some point in your grow, you're gonna need them. So I'd suggest getting them now and you're gonna probably want another clean pair for trimming afterwards too. And speaking of trimming, I would definitely suggest getting a drying rack. You could hang everything up on uh, clothes hangers, whatever you wanna do there, but for one, it's gonna just be a big, you know, stinky mess in your house. You don't really wanna have all that spread out everywhere. And also you have a lot of plant material that'll drop off the bottom that you'll notice will just be sticky, trichomes, random things like that, that'll get all over, you know, the bottom area. So I, suggest, or I definitely suggest getting a uh, drying rack. And in a future video, we'll be showing you how to just DIY it, make one yourself, a pretty nice one that the homeboy Trey actually showed me how to do in, uh, been using it ever since so stay tuned for that and subscribe now actually if you want to be updated when that comes and clearly after that drying rack is in use what are you gonna do with all that butt hopefully all that butt well you're gonna need to get some jars it seems pretty obvious you're gonna need to get jars um, or some sort of container so I've seen people use different types of things I've seen Tupperware plastic I guess uh, some people turkey bags has been the new trend you know burner out there making that pop in but Jars have always been good to me, and I stick with jars. Usually the wide mouth jars, these ones are a little tougher to get your hands in, especially if you're just trying to grab a particular nug. You gotta shake it all out, but make sure you get some sort of container, and multiple really is the best. So you're getting your grow room set up. You wanna have everything looking good. Fantastic. What do you do from there? Well, we can help you with that. Check out the link in the description for more, and learn about the 420 Growers Club. So I hope that you found this video useful, and if you did, Definitely hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that bell for more because we're definitely going to be dropping more growing tips and more things to help you optimize your grow and get the best cannabis possible. If you didn't want to write this whole entire tip list down, you can go in the description now and get the whole list. Simple and plain, nice little presentation that explains everything real smooth. Make sure you check out CannabisLifestyleTV.com and our store for more. We have plenty coming out. 
all sorts of good stuff. Again, this is Rob from Cannabis Lifestyle TV. Appreciate you watching, and always stay lifted.